The Knicks got the worst situation in the NBA, and they did nothing last night to make it any better. We All got right? picks. It's time to talk about those picks. It is time. To no, I'm out. I'm out. Let's talk Hawks. No, 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 no. Don't you try to flip it down. You opened this paper with the box talk about the Knicks. Now we're going to put no, on no. flipping it. All right? AJ they Griffin. Started, AJ Griffin. They started the night with the number 11 pick. <laughs> <laughs> They end- AJ Griffin. Who, what? Yo, listen to me. Listen to me. Who are you going to take at 11? If you were the fucking GM, who are you taking? I would have taken AJ Griffin. And what the fuck is he going to do for us? We need a fucking point guard, man. You need everything, Barry. Were- you need everything. You don't have you have one point guard on your whole team. You need everything. No. If we weren't going to get Jaden Ivey, that's why we were vigorously trying to trade up to three or four, but no one let us. First of all, then fuck it. All the reports say that that uh, AJ Griffin can be an All Star player, and that he is the second most scoring potential in this entire class behind Jabari Smith. That's what every Brother, report said. Listen to me. Dad listen played to in me. the NBA ten years. His mom hey. was a collegiate track star. He led the NCAA in three point shooting this year. He has a he can shoot the three. three. He is a seven foot wingspan. He's a three-level scorer. Bro. Did, did I not say you. before this draft on wax that I thought he'd be the best out of the do guys? Did I not say that? Did somebody say that about Cam Reddish or am I confused? I also said that about Cam Reddish. I did also say yep. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. I said, Zion said was gonna that be about Cam. I said Zion was going to be better, but I did say he'd be second best. I did say that. All right. I was like, <laughs> I did say that. The only thing I'll say is – um. I do. I like AJ Griffin, but it does give me cause for pause that he wasn't that great at Duke. Now there is a pecking order. I understand as far as like talent and the point guards have to dribble and they got the ball. You know, majority of the time in college, he can shoot the fucking lights out. And I think Atlanta might be a good situation for him, but I don't think he would have been the right person to go to the Knicks because their situation is all fucked up. I think him going to the Hawks is a good situation for him. I think he'll be good there. Bro, what are we doing? We're finally going to get to my Atlanta Hawks now because I had moments of great happiness and I have moments of great frustration. And let me start with the moments of great frustration. Talking about ownership, investing whatever it takes to improve the team. We sold the number 41 pick in this draft to the Golden State Warriors, who have the largest tax bill in the NBA, who are doing everything they can, regardless of the cost, no matter how prohibitive, we will improve this team to contend next year. We will pay the Atlanta Hawks $3 million to get another player who could possibly become a Gary Payton, another player who could possibly become a contributor at the end of the season. For... I think, Terry, this is now the 16th or 17th time in my lifetime the Atlanta Hawks have drafted cash considerations with one of their picks. We had, we did this when the Atlanta Sports Group owned the team and they owned the Atlanta Thrashers. They did this when they had the other guy come in and Danny Ferry was making uh, disparaging remarks about Lou Aldang. And now we finally get a new owner who says, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll spend the money. I'll pay the luxury tax. There is nothing that I won't do to make this team a contender. And what do they do? They turn around and sell the 41st pick to the NBA champions, who I can almost promise will find a rotation player out of there. Oh, yeah, of course they will. But I don't know about you guys. What are you guys going to do? What are y'all doing this year? What are the Atlanta Hawks doing this year to make yourselves a contender, bro? Because you guys were in the playoffs. Well, if you guys want to find out more about that, you can go to www.thhlspod.com. I have an article right up now uh, detailing what I would do if I was the GM of the Hawks this offseason. But they started last night with the number 16 pick and they took AJ Griffin out of Duke, who we briefly discussed Terry. They said he had bad hips. They said he got injured a lot in high school and college. I said he led the NCAA in three point shooting 
that he was extremely efficient at the rim from mid range and from deep, that he is a seven foot wingspan, that he is six seven with Jimmy Butler's frame, and that he can dribble and that he can shoot. I think this dude, out of everyone in the like outside of the lottery, has the biggest chance to be a uh, all star in the NBA. And I was very, very happy that he was available for the Hawks to take him there at number 16. Yeah, I think you're right. Probably out of everyone, you know, not in the lottery, he probably has the best chance of doing it. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Uh, he, I think he's a good fit for y'all. I, I hope that he works as a wing because, unfortunately, I won't say that your picks were bad. They were. Like, I mean, you could say it. They tried. They've tried this now well, with Kevin Herter, who's 6'7", with DeAndre Hunter, who's 6'8", with Cam Reddish, who's 6'8". They know the formula. Get a long dude who can play defense and can create next to Trey Young. The problem is finding that guy. Well, like, that's the thing, though. Like, what are you supposed to do when you draft somebody that's supposed to be fucking good? Like, the Pelicans. They drafted Zion. Dude had – he showed you he was a fucking really good player. And every time DeAndre Hunter is healthy, he plays really well for y'all. Like, he, he, I think he does for a majority of the time. At least 60 to 70% of the time he plays really well for the Hawks, I think. You know, for my eyes. I'm, object, I gotta, I'm objective, though, so it's, like, different. You know, Cam had flashes. I mean, were you supposed – you drafted the top player in that spot. You made no mistake. Like, you got the person. They just didn't play well. That's not on you. They got hurt a decent amount. That's not on you. I feel like the GM drafted the guy that was supposed to be good. The Trey Young Lucas shit. Well, that's why. Terry, there's been what? there's been some conspiracy theories swirling in the Hawks Twitter sphere. And one of those conspiracy theories involves the San Antonio Spurs. AJ Dillon or AJ Griffin worked out nine times for the San Antonio Spurs coming up to this draft. Ooh. Nine times. And before the draft. The Atlanta Hawks and the Spurs had been engaged in hours in trade discussions centering around John Collins and Deontay Murray to bring Deontay Murray to the A. So many people have posited out there that it's possible that the Hawks took A.J. Griffin to eventually be traded to the Spurs as they knew that he was their highest rated prospect um, and that him and Collins are going to actually be the make weights for a Deontay Murray blockbuster trade. What would you say to that? That would be interesting. That would be interesting as fuck. But, I don't know. Keep AJ Griffin, man. Stop making it complicated. Let the motherfucker play, bro. Dudes can shoot, man. Unlike Cam with his streaky shit. Shit, you know what? We can't even say anything. We saw Cam shoot lights out in college. So know. it's tough. We saw him make big shots, but he shot 31% from three uh when he went totality totality 31 percent. all right I'd, I'd have to take a look at that a- again, aj but. griffin 43 and a half 40 percent. yeah he, he he can shoot i don't know we'll and see bro he's got a weird stance he's got a, weird yeah, he's got a wide base he does have a wide a base jump for, shot. for his shot i noticed that as well but it's a weird you jump. know when you get guys who are being comped to be somewhere between Devin Booker and Jimmy Butler with the 16 pick. And the question is his injuries. I think that's a pretty good swing to take. And I like it. I was happy the, the Hawks the, picked him. The last two guys I, mean, I want to talk about are the Spurs. They drafted one of my favorite players in the entire draft, Jeremy Sohan with their first pick. I think it was number six. He's the like Ben Simmons like dude on defense who's six ten can guard all five positions, has tremendous instincts, excellent rebounder, great in transition. You know, like a defensively a mix between Tybal and Ben Simmons, who's bigger and can play center. That's who they took. Then they got Malachi Branham with their second pick, who's a three level scorer in college, who's efficient at every level, was a good defender. Every year, dude, we just see the Spurs get these guys, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's gonna be a great pick." Oh yeah, they did it again. I'm uh, I'm very happy for them, and even though the Spurs are, might be the most boring team in the NBA, uh, <laughs> I think that's gonna be changing pretty soon. As soon as they stop letting Josh Primo take 20 shots a game. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to our podcast this evening. Thank you, thank you. You're far too kind.